Hello, you Foxy listener. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am really excited about today's guest, mainly because I have followed her for a little while and I love the advice that she throws out there. But also because I think the topic that we're talking about is something that isn't spoken about a lot in the business world. And sometimes it's the one thing that gets overlooked, but is the most important thing, not only in your personal life, but in your professional life. Julie Wadley, my guest today, is a certified life and relationship coach and the owner of boutique matchmaking and coaching firm Eli Simone, based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. She was trained at both the Match. Matchmaking Institute and the Relationship Coaching Institute. And she has learned that the ability to love and be loved is one of the strongest forces of nature, yet one of the most overlooked and underrated life goals. Infusing her no nonsense, cut to the chase personality, she challenges people to get back to basics on building a fulfilling life. Her mission is to empower individuals to find and keep love by assessing individual goals and customizing strategies to achieve them. Her goal is to bring out the best in people so they can bring out the best in others. Julie has been featured as a relationship expert on NBC, CBS, The CW, The Chicago Tribune, The Guardian, Madame Noir, and the list goes on and on. Her events, workshops, and e-courses and seminars offer a multitude of practical techniques to bring love to life. I am so honored to have her on the show today and so grateful that she took some time out of her day to join us. And I know that this is going to be an episode that you're going to love to tune into, pun intended. Welcome to Fox Talks Business Podcast with your host, Tanya Fox. Tanya has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, owning retail, service, and franchise. She holds no punches and is never afraid to talk about the nitty gritty. Together, you'll explore the good, the bad, and the motivational of business life, turning obstacles into opportunities and failures into successes. So grab your favorite drink and let's have some fun. Here's your host, speaker, crafter, and collaborator, Tanya Fox. So thank you so much for joining me today, Julie. I am just so honored to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I've been looking forward to this for a minute, so I'm glad to just get into the conversation. So um, tell me a little bit about your story of how you got to where you are today and more so like what made you decide to sort of take this path, a uh, career path? Yeah, so I completely blame my sister <laughs> for me going down this path because, um, you know, back in 2013, um, I had just been visiting her in, uh, in New York and we had, you know, girlfriends night. And as usual, what do we, what do girls end up talking about? Married, single or otherwise men. Right. So they happen to be single. I'm married and they're just like, oh my God, I've been dating this guy. And all of a sudden he's, you know, not going to commit. And I thought this guy was, you know, it for me. And so it was really, it was a really emotional week. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, like what is going on? You have these beautiful, educated, ambitious, uh, funny, smart women who are having such a hard time. And their story is not unlike a lot of other women. And so I said, what really is going on? And so as I went back home, my sister was just like, you know what? You gave really great advice not only from just a married person, just from your perspective is always rational. Like you should really do this. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I just like talking about it. Right. And so she's like, no, seriously, I think this is a career path for you. Like you really should be giving, you know, advice to women about, you know, marriage and dating and, you know, just how to just, you know, not fuss and not stress out over this thing because you really kind of like talked us through it. And so after I kind of scoffed it off, I just did some research just to say, like, okay, if I tried to do something like this, um, you know, what would that look like? And the more I researched it, the more I realized that this was a legitimate business, um, that, you know, this is really fulfilling a need. And especially in this day and age where technology is such a big thing, we've sort of lost connection with 
people. We've sort of lost our community. And so um, as a result, dating relationships um, are now, it's now more difficult. And so I decided, you know, if I'm going to start a business, I, I want to uh, do something that matters. I want to, I want to be in a business where I'm actually impacting people's lives directly, not from a computer, not from some indirect, um, you know, method of lining some millionaire, billionaire's pockets. Like I really wanted to touch the people and touch the community. So, you know, five years later, here I am uh, working with a niche market of women um, who are entrepreneurs. They are at the top of their game. They are philanthropists. They are judges. They're lawyers. They're doctors. They're teachers. And so they all, we all have the same, at the end of the day, we all have the same um, sort of issues and concerns like being with the love of your life and loving the life that you that you're living and wanting to share it with the people that matter so that's why I wanted to do it and that's what keeps me busy <laughs> so I really wanted to talk to you today because I think that relationship is one of the things that entrepreneurs tend to kind of put on the back burner and when they start and they're not in a relationship they become a, having a relationship with their business. And when they are in a relationship, it's almost like you're having an affair. So yes. can you talk to us a little bit about your experiences along those lines? Yeah. I mean, that's probably, you're probably talking to this girl right here. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> when I started my business, I was married. I was married and I had two kids. They were very small at the time. And um, I said, this is what I wanted to do. And I thought, you know, is, if I had a passion for it, it'd be easy. Like, I know what I'm talking about. This is no problem. Okay. Any entrepreneur knows any business, I don't care what it is, it is going to be hard. And so in an essence, it really does become one of the most important things that's um, in your life at the moment. It's your baby. And babies take up all your time. They take up all your energy. They don't sleep. You don't sleep. <laughs> and so, you know, anything else that's not related to the business takes a back seat. And my marriage and my kids for a while did take a back seat because I was so focused on getting it off the ground and making money because I wanted to, at the end of the day, I wanted to support my family with, with the business that I loved, but you kind of have to, I kind of had to prioritize it for a minute. Um, and that's, and that's okay. And I had to learn that I had to learn that it was okay to shift your priorities based on, you know, what is needed at the time. That doesn't make anything um, like your marriage or your kids less important. It's just that you have to know how to balance. And I say this to women who are dating or who are in, in a relationship or marriage, and you have something as important as a business that you are trying to get off the ground or you're trying to sustain is that it is okay to want to give enough time and effort that is needed towards your business. But that doesn't mean that everything else in your life that is important is less important. You just have to know when to pick your battles, right? So I kind of give the advice like you got to have a plan. You can't just be willy nilly every day out of the week. You're spending like 16, 17 hours a day on your business and then you go to sleep and you crash and you leave everything else to burn. It's one of those things where you tell your, your family, your friends, your business partners, whatever, hey, guess what? This is my life. These are the things that are important to me. This is how much this is going to take. So I know that this might be different. I know this might be a hardship, but... I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this for a larger, a larger um, mission, right? And so I had to tell my husband, you know, you know, you're, 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 you've run, you've been to grad school, you know all about business. You know that this is going to take time. So let's just agree. And agree is the, the term here. Agree that I'm going to dedicate a certain amount of time to this business. And I'm going to agree to set aside a certain amount of time in my day, week, or whatever for you and for the kids. So as long as you agree with the people who are important to you that this is what you're going to be doing, um, priorities are going to be shifting temporarily, then it's okay. It's when you don't have that communication. It's when you don't give yourself a plan that things just go all to crap. 
Right. And I think that's so true because a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, it, I don't think it crosses their mind to have that conversation, yeah. especially when they're in a relationship where one is an entrepreneur and one is sort of in the corporate world because yeah. it is two very different things. Like yeah. you don't just go home and go, oh, okay, I clocked out. Like, there's right. No thing. And sometimes people that are living that corporate world have never tried to venture out and do something on their own don't really understand that lifestyle. I mean, it is a lifestyle. When you become an entrepreneur, and even if you're just kind of like part-time in it, you're doing corporate world one, uh, you know, nine to five, I call it nine to five, one minute or um, for the day. And then, you know, nights and weekends, your business, you know, you, you work on your business. Either way, people who are just nine to fivers, they don't really understand your lifestyle. And so you're going to have to communicate that to them because it is a change. It is a shift. And if you weren't that person before and suddenly you changed, that's a new, you know, that's a new relationship. You introduced a change to the relationship, whether that person wanted it or not. And so you're going to have to, you're going to be the one um, with the burden of making sure that they agree to the change if they don't agree then you got some problems that you need to work through but the first thing is to agree to the change so what um i know like one of the hardest things like just even taking business out of it but just like being an adult once you sort of get out of school and all that other stuff the number one question that comes up is i have no idea where to meet people and yeah. i remember going through that myself because once i was out it was like I was an entrepreneur almost right away. And so I didn't have people around the office, yeah. and, you know, that, that were potentials. I didn't want to go to a bar because that wasn't, you know, that wasn't my target market to use keywords. Right. <laughs> and I mean, I ended up meeting my husband online and yeah. a lot of people are like, Ooh, you know, and I'm like, Hey, it worked for us. We've been it together worked. for 15 years. I have some funny story, like, uh, well, they're funny now, but they were horror stories at the time. But mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things is that people just go, it's too hard to meet people. I'll just stay single. Yeah. And I think that it's really a mind shift and a mindset um, that people who are um, looking, no matter if you're an entrepreneur, nine to five or whatever, if you decide that you want to now um, meet someone new and you're just like, okay, how do I do it? Where do I go? What do I do? That overwhelm can hamper the process. So I say, start with what you got, right? Unless you live on an island, unless you live in Bora Bora with no access to people whatsoever, you every single day have an opportunity to meet people. Don't think that you have to go to a bar that you have to go out, that you have to, you know, do something way out of the norm for, for yourself to meet people. Meet people where you're at. So everybody goes to the grocery store. Everybody goes to the post office. Everybody goes to, you know, pick up their mail um, from, you know, if you're living in an apartment or, you know, you're going to laundry, whatever. You are meeting and seeing people every single day. So utilize the time and the opportunities that are in front of you first. Exhaust that first, okay? So, and I think we're just like, I'm not meeting anybody at the grocery store. I probably got my, my scarf on. I got these yoga pants. I just came back from the gym. I'm sweaty. I'm ugly. I don't, you know, people just start making excuses, right? They're just right. like, I'm not ready. You know, I'm not, you know, I didn't fluff myself up. So. And I say, don't make this a meat market. Don't make every situation a meat market. You just need to be aware of your surroundings. So I always say, just keep in mind in, in the course of your day to take a minute, take a beat and just survey your environment. Who's new? Who's interesting? Can you have a quick conversation? If you are not comfortable with meeting new people on the fly, right? Five minute, hey, how you doing? Oh, I like those shoes. Oh, you're new. I haven't met you before. Or, oh, what, what kind of coffee is that? Or, you know, something to where you're striking up a conversation with something. If you're not comfortable there, it's probably, dating is probably going to be hard for you. Right. So I say anyone who is like, where do I go? First things first, 
exhaust your, your, the existing surrounding. Two, make every opportunity an opportunity for you to meet someone and then practice those getting to know you skills. Once you practice enough, that you, you're starting to meet people, the person that you actually do want to meet, it'll be easier to meet them. Right. Right. So when you do meet them, you're just like, okay, great. Had a great conversation. We laugh. We kiki for a second. Hey, there's this great, um, you know, jazz set that's going on on Thursday night. You like jazz? I was thinking about going with a couple of friends. Do you want to go? Boom. Easy peasy, no pressure. If he says no, she says no. It's okay. All right. Well, cool. Hope I see you around one day. Even if it didn't result in a date, you have practiced the idea of meeting someone and pitching yourself to make a connection. And the more and more you do that, the easier it will be to date where you're at. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one of the struggles that I hear from entrepreneurs the most it, especially if they're what I call a solo entrepreneur. So they're, they're, they're not around anybody else is they're like, they're introverts, right? So they're terrified. Yeah. Like networking is just terrifying for yeah. them. And I yeah. think that this is a good skill, you know, for them to use even just to learn how to network. Cause that's really yeah. what, you know, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's really kind of what dating is, is just networking yes. with a whole bunch of different Absolutely. people and going, you know what? I think that we can do a collaboration here. I yes. think it's something yes. to offer you and you have something to offer me. And I know yes, even absolutely. when I deal with collaborations for my clients, the number one thing I say to them is you have to learn how to talk to people. Like you yeah. can't just walk into the door and be like, I have this thing for you and it's going to be awesome. And you're going to let, cause you're going to like, they're just going to be like, it, okay, it, it, <laughs> like, back off like yeah 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 well there Linda yeah <laughs> and, exactly. it's, and it's so it's this sort of the same same idea of this is you yeah. can the idea of going out and meeting people isn't that you're going out to find Prince Charming it's just yeah. using you know you're you're telling them to sort of um get used to using that skill of Absolutely. being able to talk to a stranger Absolutely. And I think, especially for entrepreneurs, if you are not comfortable getting uncomfortable, you will not succeed. Yeah. Period. Very true. Right? Because as, a, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, your number one critical skill is, to, is, a, is sales. You're trying to get clients. You're trying to get leads. You're trying to get sales, right? You're trying to you know, make money for your business. If you are not comfortable getting into in unfamiliar surroundings, making connections that are, that are supposed to help your business, learning something new, getting uncomfortable with new things, new technology, new tools, new resources, new people, you will not succeed. And it's the same thing with, it's the same thing with dating. It's the same thing with relationships. If you are just comfortable, you know what, this is not my thing. I don't meet new people. They make me uncomfortable. I would rather, you know, the man is supposed to do this. The woman's supposed to do that. They're supposed to come. Sweetie, it's not going to work for you. Right. Unless you are, it, uh, until you get comfortable with being uncomfortable and trying new things and doing things doing, changing things so that you are getting different results, you will not succeed. Period. When we were having a conversation um, before this, we had talked about how dating kind of really hasn't changed a lot. And I really yeah. loved your, um, your perception when we had that conversation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people kind of wax poetic about the good old days, right? They're right. like, back in the day, it was not this hard. People, you know, got married for 50, 60 years. They met in high school and it was such a love story. Oh my. Trust me, talk to your grandma. It, it probably wasn't that great, <laughs> first of all. But things really haven't changed because people haven't changed. Relationships still require work. Relationships still require a deeper connection than what we are giving it today. Back in the day, we were forced to communicate with each other. One, because we didn't have internet. Two, because we didn't, we barely had, you know, means of communication other than getting together with your community. You didn't have, you know, a bunch of people had access to planes, trains, automobiles. There wasn't, that wasn't a thing that it is today. So who did you connect with? Your neighbor, 
the people that you went to school with, the people that you went to church with, that was your community. And so you always, I don't care who you are, where you were born and when you were born, you will find your partner in somewhere in your community in some way. And so that has not changed in 2019. You still will meet your person in your community. You just have to find what and who your community is. Now, people are, you know, blaming technology and social media and online dating for these weird, crazy, jacked up, you know, dating stories. And we all have them, right? But it's only a tool. You know, it's a tool that we use to communicate and get connections. But at the end of it, we are still people and we still crave connection. We still crave community. And if you are not doing anything to cultivate that community, cultivate that connection, you will continue to have, you know, these crazy racked out stories because you're trying to shortcut. You know, everyone is trying to use, you know, get, get a microwave result. We're so used to snappy. I get online, whiz bang, I got my answer. I need something to eat. I'll go get something. You know, I'll go to fast food restaurant. If I need something, I'll just, you know, everything's microwave, everything's instant. So we're expecting instant results with people. And we're old school. We're the dinosaurs here. Yeah. We're the, we're the dinosaurs left. We still require investment. We still require someone to kind of grow with us, even in friendships. If you think about your best friend, you weren't instant best friends. There was some time and effort that you put into it. There was, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of talking. There was a lot of like, yeah, me too. There's a lot of, yes, I will help you out. I mean, it, at the end of the day, and I can go on and on, dating, relationships, marriage, all that has not changed. Only the tools that we use to help us get that have changed. You just have to know how to use those tools effectively to get what you want. Online dating is a great example. People are like, oh my God, I hate online dating. I'm just going there swiping. The whole point of online dating is to get off. The whole point is to find someone that you kind of see something that might be cool with. Hey, would you like to grab some coffee? Hey, would you like to go to that jazz? I saw you like jazz. There's a new jazz set going on. Would you want to go with me and a couple friends? Cool. And then get to building that connection. You know, we want to we wanna have an instant, oh my God, instant boyfriend, instant girlfriend. No, you, it still requires that time, you know, that time in it. You still need skin in the game. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard getting people to wrap their minds around the fact that society has advanced, but humans haven't. Yeah. And I think it's true too, because I think like you were saying about that instant gratification that people are wanting is that that really has, you know, sort of moved over to their, you know, their personal life. Because I remember going like having a date with this guy you know, who of course had the, you know, the stereotypical perfect online image. Like he was good looking. He had a good job. Like he looked like he had everything going for him. And he took me on a bus and we like took the whole route of the bus. It was the oddest date I've ever had in my life. And at the end, I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy this weird <laughs> Like, and he was like, somebody got on and played guitar and he was like singing. And you know, at the time I was like, that was crap. But in hindsight, I was like, you know what? Here, this human could have taught me such a huge lesson in life. And did, and I did in hindsight, as I looked back and went, my expectation, I yes. went, I went yes. in holding these expectations. Yes. Whereas yes. if I would have been open, I would have seen how beautiful this man's heart was that he took so much joy out of just meeting people, out of listening to music, out of just experiencing life. And I thought, yeah. I wish I would have been more in that moment. And yeah. when I went with my, you know, my now husband, he wasn't someone who like on paper, I was just like, eh, I got nothing else to do. Like, <laughs> and we went right. out on a date and it was like the best date I ever had. Like, you know, and I'm still with him and still very much in love with him and all of that other stuff. But yeah, at first I was just like, eh, I got nothing else to do. I'll go with this guy. <laughs> and, and you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head when you said I had these expectations because I think that 
our expectations is really just a mirror of who we think we are. Right. Right. They're like, I have this job, I have this clout, I am this type of person, so I expect this. Or I'm going out on a date, here's my expectations of how this date should go. I will know that this date is going well if this happens. I know that this person is for me if he does this, if she does that, if he pays this, if he, if there's, there's all of these, you know, check boxes that people are trying to check off, but they're not doing it because that's actually something that they care about. They're doing it because they think that's what society cares about. Right. Yeah. So you being on that bus, you're just like, Oh my God, I'm literally on a bus. <laughs> they like, we should be in somebody's restaurant. You should be ordering me some steak, some lobster, some wine, because that's what I have been taught. Yeah. That's what a date should be. Anything outside of that, anything that doesn't cost you to pull out your wallet is not a date. Right. I don't know how many women that's just like, um, this is not a date. A date is, and it's like, uh, no, a date is any time you get together with someone with the intention of getting to know them. So I am so glad that in hindsight, you you appreciated that date and it was a date no matter how poopy yeah, it oh was, it was. <laughs> um I, that you appreciate it it's just that you know people should take that as a lesson now if they're dating now every opportunity you have to meet someone whether you're at you know outside walking walking you know down the street getting some ice cream every everything is a date Anything is a date as long as you are both meeting with the with the with the desire to figure out if this is someone that you want to see again. That's a date. Well, and I think like I always think back to like you said, you know, the the restaurant and the candlelight and a soft walk, and you know, now after being married and having kids, and I'm like, oh God, just for the peace and quiet to just sit on a bus and read yes. a book would be like a heavenly date to me now. Yes, right? like, yes, yes. Like somebody <laughs> think to me, like. <laughs> Somebody serenade me on a bus, what? And I'm enjoying the, you know, the city and all that. That might, you know, and the fact that that was so different, you never forgot that. I never, I you never, never did. forgot that. No. And I promise you, if he'd have just taken you to, you know, some restaurant, okay, out of a thousand dates that, that are the same thing, you'd be like, oh, what was that guy's name? He, we went to somewhere I don't remember and I don't remember even the conversation but you will always remember that day yeah and I actually still am in touch with him like it, it, oh wow it between us, but we're still friends and stuff and I remember you know about a year after it had happened and I sort of said you know what I'm just curious what made because is that a common thing for you and he goes oh no I've never I never did that before but it was interesting when I said well well why and he said you just were such an unusual person that I wanted to do something unique because wow. I felt that you were unique and you deserve something unique. And I thought, Oh, wow. That's so sweet. Like how'd I have oh, wow. asked that question, you know, yeah, but I, yeah. I just, why didn't you ever ask me? And I'm like, I don't know. It just felt like it was going to come out. Like what the hell are we doing on a book? <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Right. I was, I was trying not to let, you know, the, the inner me come out too much because yeah, yeah. You're playing that, you know, you're being that role. cautious and very careful and, you know, all of that other stuff. So, so for um, married couples, because I do have a lot of listeners who are, who are married and stuff. And I would say probably the thing I hear most, like through my friends and stuff is just the long hours, right? Especially I'm in Alberta in Canada. So we have a lot of oil field. So we have a lot of relationships that are sort of part-time marriages, right? Cause they're gone so much. And yeah. then they come back. What yeah. advice could you give them of the key thing to sort of hold that relationship together? Like, is it still probably the communication piece? Yeah. Um, so I really, for, for marriages where you don't see each other very often, um, love languages is critical. 
And if no one, um, you know, if anyone out there doesn't know or have heard about the five love languages, I believe the author of the book is uh, by Gary Coleman. I, I'm not sure, but the name of the book is the five love languages. And it's really just saying, how do I receive love? How do I know that my partner is showing me love and how can I um, deliver love? Like what language am I showing or displaying my love for someone else? And so it's like physical touch, words of affirmation, um, you know, service, uh, gifts, and I think something else. So I think it's critical <clears throat> that people who are not physically together all the time really understand their partner. Mm -hmm. Because you don't, time is not, you know, constantly being with someone doesn't a relationship make. Right, absolutely. That constant confirmation and security within that relationship, that's what's critical. And people mistake time for investment. Right. And that's not the case. You can be married to someone for 12 years and not know them or not love them. Right. or be strangers, right? It's that you understand your partner so that you show them through their love language that they are still important. So you have a bunch of um, you know, people who work in the oil industry and they're away. Um, if that person, their love language is words of affirmation, calling them up on the phone is saying, hey, babe, I know you're tired. I know this is really stressful. I can't wait to see you. You're doing such a great job. You know, tell me about what's going on with your work. I'm here to support you. I know you can do this. You're amazing. Things like that keep, you, it keeps it going, right? It keeps the fire burning long enough until you can see them again. Mm -hmm. So another person may be gifts. You know what, you know what to do there. <laughs> now physical touch that's a little different and a lot of men would probably claim <laughs> no surprise there that their love language is physical touch right so in that case it might be difficult to where sometimes you might have to make a surprise trip if possible right but that surprise trip the fact that you you know made the effort to go see them where they're at or to call them on the phone and saying, I can't wait to, you know, give you a massage or, you know, when you come home, you know, just making sure that you're rubbing them and always, you know, being close to them. Just the, it's quality time. This is about building quality time. The farther away you are physically, the more important the quality is to the time that you do have. Yeah. And I think it's true too. I looked it up. Yeah. It's Gary Chapman who wrote that oh, book. Chapman, and I remember, yeah. yeah, you were so close. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> I remember reading that, that book and what it, what that, and I loved it because what it did for me is realize that, um, for the longest time, I would probably say the first eight years of my marriage, I was giving what I wanted to receive. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, here's what I want. So I'm going to give yeah. you what, what I want to yeah. sort of lead by example. Yeah. Once yeah. I read that book and, and, and actually sat with my husband and read it and realized I need to give him what he needs, not what I want. Like yeah. I need to communicate what I want by literally saying it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we were on different paths, but we were both doing that to each other without realizing yeah. it is he was showing me what he wanted and I was showing him what I wanted, but neither one of us were cluing in that that's what was yeah. happening. <laughs> and, but, but you know what? That's what people do. They're just like, and, and <laughs> it's funny, it, either that or men will get stuck on the, the gifts. They're yeah. like, Oh, flower, candy, jewelry, because that's what women like. You know what I mean? That's not what women like. Well, honestly, it shouldn't matter what women like. All that matters is what your woman likes. Right. All that matters is what your man likes. So don't get stuck in the, you know, the stereotypes of what, you know, you think a man or a woman would want. Really understand understanding your man, understanding your woman is, is critical um, to sustaining long relationships, period, but even more so when you're not physically there all the time. Yeah. And I think that's true too. And I think the communication thing is the key is having those conversations with each other when it's not heated. And that's one thing yeah. I always try to do with my husband is take a breath and then have a conversation when we're both calm to say, um, you know, I think the biggest one that we've ever had is me saying, 
you need to stop buying me the gifts you think I want and please get me the gifts I actually say I want. Cause I'm, I really am telling you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a huge, like I love stationery. Like I have so many notebooks. It's crazy. But I would be like, this is what I want. And he's like, a notebook's like five bucks. That's not good enough. And I'm like, yeah, like, no, it, it is. took me eight years to get a vacuum. Cause I was like, I really want this vacuum, but it's so expensive. I would never buy it for myself. He's like, I cannot buy you a vacuum for Christmas. And finally he did. And I was so thrilled that I got a vacuum and I got some kitchen stuff. And he's like, oh my God. Like, and I was yeah. like, to me, that it, it, that's my thing. Like I asked for stuff that I wouldn't normally buy for myself because yeah. it's frivolous or, you know, I don't necessarily need it. And, but having that conversation was, was really a big thing because I, I don't care how much something costs to me. It's the thought. But yeah. whereas his mentality wasn't that he thought, well, like, I mean, it's got to add up, right? Yeah, and I was yeah. like, it doesn't have to add up to nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's so interesting um, how men generally, I'll put it in general terms, how they think, right? Um, and leading back to that communication piece. And so it's, it's so much easier said than done um, talking to your partner and talking to married, you know, husbands, boyfriends, whatever. Um, it's so much easier said than done to talk, just talk because we get so afraid of confrontation. I think men are so afraid of co confronting their, um, their partners with the truth because they're more interested in protecting you from, you know, hurt or pain or, you know, something that might, um, you know, you might not find pleasant. And so I always tell my husband, can you just tell me when something's going on? You know what I mean? Like he yeah. would rather, you know, ignore it. <clears throat> and I, this is me knowing my husband for 20 plus years. I have to bring it up. I'm the one that calls everything out immediately because I know he wouldn't do it yeah. because he's more concerned with protecting me and not causing a rift and you know not you know causing drama but i'm like if something's going on okay i need you to know right now that this isn't i don't like this or you need to tell me what's going on with you right now because i know that when you start pursing your lips or when you start blinking really fast you're really you're thinking hard and yeah. if you're thinking hard then you know you want to say something that you really don't want to say so what is it and you know even after 20 years it doesn't get it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't stop um, uh, knowing your partner and, and dating uh, for, for lack of a better word, because you're still growing, you're yeah. still changing, you're still evolving all the time. So just be, and I think that, you know, people who are single, they look at people who are married in, in some way that's just like, oh man, you guys made it. Like you got, you got, you got to marriage, everything's cool. Nah, you still have to date your husband. You still have to date your wife because every year could be a new person. Yeah. You could have married, you know, <clears throat> who you are five years from now is not who you married, you know, back in the day. So you constantly have to communicate um, to reset and re revalue goals and, um, you know, lifestyles and value, that, like everything. And so communication is key. If you don't have that, and if you aren't comfortable with being uncomfortable, then you're going to have problems because things change all the time. But in a relationship, you got to still be lockstep. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it too, right? Like it's, it's the growing together, you know, and, and yeah, I'm not definitely not the same person that I was, you know, when we first met. But fortunately, we've grown together during that, you know, that whole time and, and, and have been able to sort of continuously build that relationship. But we too forget. And then all of a sudden, you know, we'll pass each other in the hallway and I'll be like, do you still live here? Like, because you don't see each other, right? For so right, long. And, right. and yeah. it's, it's, I think like you had said before, it's, it's taking those steps and realizing that you, you do need to still make that effort to spend that quality time together to have those moments where it's just the two of you and not get sucked into the day-to-day -day events of 
just living, like you said, just working and going to bed, you can't let your relationship fall into that yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's just like a muscle, right? Relationships are just like a muscle. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Right. You, it will dissolve if you don't continue to work on that muscle. Right. So as you get older, you know, you still gotta, you still gotta work out. You probably have to work out even more to maintain just to maintain you have to continue to work out and work out more and more and more this is just the same thing with relationships the same thing with marriage you have to keep pouring into it just to maintain that relationship if you don't do anything if you just get stuck in the minutia of the day if you allow raising your children to be your marriage you're going to turn around and not have one you're going to turn around and realize that you, you're married to a stranger or you're married to someone that you actually don't like. Yeah. So if you are not constantly exercising those relationship muscles, taking the time out to, you know, get back into a lockstep with your partner or just realize like, hey, what's, what's going on? What's new? What's, what's, what's up? What are you thinking? How, how have things changed for them? What are they going through? What battles are they going through? What has changed? You know, what? big life, um, you know, changes happen. Divorce, or not divorce, but your parents getting older, children being in the picture, um, parents dying. People, there's so many huge life events that happen throughout um, that may not d- directly impact your marriage, but they do impact your marriage because they're changing along with life. And so you have to, your relationship has to change with it. Yeah. And I think that one thing that people sort of have never looked at, a lot of the clients that I've worked with is they just say, well, I'm not getting along with my partner or I'm not, you know, with my business partner and not realizing that that in itself is another relationship and to work on that. And I, I don't know, like, I remember growing up, anybody who went to like counseling, it was, they were doomed. Yeah. This was the, like, that was just like, yeah. you hear Cecil and Ernie are going to counseling. My God, like, you know, they've been together forever. I'm so sad for them, you know? And you're like, it's over already? Like, Yeah, yeah. We didn't already put the nail in a coffin, people. Yeah. 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 So do you find that that mentality has changed for people? Like, do you find that they're more open to going, you know what, that maybe counseling isn't, uh, a final ditch effort, but something that you can incorporate just to help the relationship? I think it has gotten better over time. Right. Um, you know, mental health and personal development and personal growth is now a thing. Right. Um, and, you know, I don't know, you know, how things happen in Canada or the culture in Canada versus the, the culture in the, in the U.S., but, you know, there's been such a um, surgence of personal development and personal growth and therapy and it being okay to have therapy that it has gotten better. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, especially within cultural um, segments, it may be less uh, acceptable than it is mainstream, but for the most part, I do think that things have gotten better. Um, but I think it's gotten better in relation to personal therapy, right? right? So it's okay if you are going to therapy for a specific reason. And you know, some of the some things are like acceptable, like a death of a, of a family member, something traumatic has happened, um, you know, something where people can like, oh, I understand, like, you know, you need, you know, therapy is good, that that's great, but marriage, um, there's still a stigma there. Yeah. Um, getting counseling is still that. Ooh, they can count. Mm. Yeah, that it's still there. That stigma yeah. is still there. Um, I am actually a proponent of premarital coaching and premarital counseling because you still have a lot of people who are getting married for the wrong reasons. Absolutely. Um, and so those reasons only get more pronounced um, when you're actually married. And so by that time, you know, people are like, 
oh, you're married, just work it out within, you know, people don't want to, people don't want to see it. It's almost like you ha you're having problems. Oh, no, no, no. It's almost like it's contagious. Like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know that you're going to counseling. I don't want to, you know, yeah. I, people so, so want there to be a black box when it comes to relationships. All they want to see is that you guys are doing okay. Mm -hmm. The minute that you, you mentioned counseling or therapy, it's like, oh man, if y'all can't make it, well then I, I'm doomed. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You guys were the couple that everybody looked to. If y'all got problems, I don't know what, you know? So I think people still don't want to admit that they need help. Um, some people, and especially men, don't want to introduce third parties into their marriage because they feel right. like, you know, traditionally... What happens in a marriage stays in a marriage. What happens in a family stays in a family. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, that, that's still a tough battle to climb. Yeah. And I think it, it just takes from people, you know, being okay with saying it, you know, and, and being okay with, with asking for help. Because I think we see that in all fields that people are like, oh, I can't ever say you know, that I need help or that, you know, someone else might have better ideas. And, you know, we're in such a day and age where there's so much information out there, but that's yeah. also a problem too, is that there's yeah. so much information yeah. and you, you go search for, you know, how do you tell if a banana is ripe? And all of a sudden you walk away from your computer and you're like, I think I have cancer. Like, <laughs> Right? right, like it's just right, right. The amount of information, right. but right. So, speaking of information, you have a blog that you do, and I have read quite a few of your blog posts, and I just love them because they've given me like great ideas to go. Oh, you know what? I haven't tried something like that, or oh my god, I totally forgot. So, tell us a little bit about how your blog came to be and what people can yeah. expect from it. Yeah, so I started uh, my blog. It's called Mommy Lover Friend. Um, about two, three months ago. And it was because, I mean, I, I'm a matchmaker, I'm a relationship coach. And I realized that there were so many aspects of my life that impacted my relationships, right? So I was like, it's not just about my relationship with my husband. It is about my relationships with all of my, you know, all the people that are important to me. And so I said, I want to have a blog that talks about how all of these different pieces of my life interact and how that, that makes me, how that makes me a better mom, how that makes me a better wife, how that makes me a better friend. Um, you know, we all have uh, these, like, let's just say, for example, my relationship with my kids and how I'm raising them also speaks to how I was raised and how I was raised it impacts how my relationship is with my husband. And so they're all intertwined in some way. And so I wanted to um, talk about not only what's going on in my life, because, hey, what's going on in my life, but how they all impact relationships in some form or fashion. And so, um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty interesting. I, I actually am due for um, another blog post tonight, but yeah, I mean, it's just what I, where, where, where I am right now in my life. Um, you know, my relationship with my kids are getting um, a little bit more involved because they're becoming young adults now they're they're about to be 10 and 11 and so they're not babies anymore they're not little trophies that I could just like uh co you know co bring around and, and take pictures of and so now they're actual human beings with with minds of their own what yeah so you know what I mean so they've got their own issues now that I have to start thinking about and so as a mom that's important. It's important for me to start instilling some things that will impact how they relate to their future husbands and their future, you know, wives. And so that's, it, those are things that are really important that I share with other people because I know that other, if I'm going through it, I know other people are going through it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so where can people go to find your blog? Yes. So my blog is called Mommy Lover Friend. Um, it's www.mommyloverfriend.com. And mommy is spelled M-O-M-M-I-E. Okay. Um, and they can, but if you want, you can also, um, you know, find me on Instagram. Um, I'm Mrs. Julie Wadley on Instagram and my website, uh, you know, my company website, elisimone.com. Um, if people want more information about just how to just bring love to life and bring, you know, life to love. 
And so what is your favorite thing about what you do about the matchmaking and the relationship? Um, I love the aha moments and I'm going to steal Oprah's that Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> I'm going to steal her, um, her, um, her phrase, those aha moments where I get a client with just a question, with just a way I phrase what I say, that they completely, like a light bulb goes off in their head. It's just like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize what I was saying, what I was doing, what I was thinking was impacting my life in this way, in that it was these are the results that I'm getting because of how I'm thinking or because of how I'm behaving. So if I just make one little change, that will completely open the door to new possibilities. And that's what I love. I absolutely love when a client takes ownership of their own goals. And it doesn't become about what book do I need to read? What homework assignment do I need to, you know, to do? What coach do I need to pay for? It's about you. Mm -hmm. You have the power. You have, it's all in you to change your life. And so that's the biggest thing that I, that's the, that's the one thing that I'm just like, I know that what I'm doing is, is right is good when i have someone who says julie i remember you telling me that i still to this day go back to the notes that i had when we talked i'm in a better place because of what you walked me through that i mean being able to impact someone on that level to where they can completely have a different tra trajectory to their life is like, that's groundbreaking to me. That's, that's, that's work that, you know, will live on for, yeah. for, for ages, you know, so that's, that's really special to me. And what is one of the biggest obstacles that you've had, um, being an entrepreneur? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest obstacle is trying to get people to understand that I'm really just a tool. Right. I don't have the answers. This isn't a magic pill, right? I'm not a snake oil salesman. I'm not trying to sell you a magic bullet or a magic pill that you can take and then suddenly your life is better. There is work to be done. All I am is a tool and a mirror. Right. You can use me. If you use me in the right way, it can change your life. If you use me in the wrong way, you'll see no results. Either way, it is up to you. And I think people, getting people to understand that um, is the hardest thing. You know, they're, especially being a matchmaker. Um, people think, oh, I dropped my money down. All I need is my wedding dress and I'm good to go. Like, just tell me who I need to be, where I need to be for my husband. <sighs> and when I say, okay, but there's more to it than that. Well, what do you mean? People expect results when they give over their money. And in this line of business, I am not, that's not, that's not, this isn't retail. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is a service and this is, there's a difference between retail industry and service industry with service. You can be a therapist, a counselor, a mentor, a coach, or whatever, a trainer, anything where I am helping you with your goals. You have to, you are just as important to that. If not more than me, you're only paying me to keep you on target, to challenge you to, to make you do this. But if you don't put in the effort, sweetie, you wasting money. And to get people to understand that concept is just, oh, yeah, yeah. So I've learned not to take on clients who don't get that concept, who don't understand that they are here and ready to do the work. Yeah. And I think that's important as an entrepreneur is understanding how to say we're not a good fit. 
And I think especially in service industry, that's hard for entrepreneurs to do because I I remember when I opened my first business, I said yes to everybody because I just needed clients. Like, yeah. So, and it took me a while to realize, and still to this day, I will meet with people and do an interview with them. And then I say, you know what? I just don't think you're a good fit for my company or whatever. And they're like, what? What? (laughs) But I'm going to pay you. And I'm like, but not enough. (laughs) <laughs> like it's just yeah. there's nothing wrong with you it's yeah. just we're just we're just not it's not going to connect yeah and, but it I took mean, me a long time to be okay with going you know what at the end of the day I make more money yeah only taking on those ones that I think that we connect yes. than taking on everybody yes yes all money is not good money oh I, and love I that. learned that I learned that my first two years in business, because just like you and everybody else that just started a business, they just crave clients so much. They yeah. crave, just wanted to get started. They just want to get started, right? Yeah. And, and they know that's not a good client, but they'll take them anyway because, you know, sweetie got bills, baby yeah. got shoes. <laughs> I need mean, we all, we all, you know, are in this to make money. I mean, otherwise it'd be a hobby, right? Yeah. So yes, the component, the, that component is there. But your peace of mind cannot be for sale. Yeah. And I have had to let go of that. My second year, um, I realized that I needed to listen to my intuition and save myself the heartache of working for a client who should not have ever been a client and then losing money and then having to refund refund them their money. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? Not all money is good money. I'm only taking clients who I know are ready to go and they realize that they are they have just as much stake in the results as I do. So, if I have a good feeling about you, we can do this all day. But if not, I have a great referral for you. Yeah. And I think one of the best things that I ever, best piece of advice I ever got when I first started on business is your target market cannot be the world because Uh, the world does not care about you. (laughs) And I really had to sit down. And I think that, that, you know, like you were saying, I really had to sit down and be truthful with who I was as a person and who I was going to allow to work with me. Yes. And, and be truthful about that and say, I don't want this type of person, or I don't want to work with this type of business because it doesn't bring me joy because it's not fun. And at the end of the day, like you said, it ended up costing me more, whether it was actual financially costing me more or just like taking a piece of my soul, you know, because you were just like, Oh, if I have to hear from this person one more time. Right. Right. Like, I mean, there have been, I've had so many colleagues who say, I had a client that made me want to just close up shop. And I'm like, oh my God, like that just like hurts my heart because I'm like that you should never have to deal with someone who makes you question who you are, the value that you, that you bring. You're not for everybody. I say this to my clients all the time, even the ones that are in, that are single and dating, you are not for mass consumption. (laughs) Don't worry about pleasing everybody and wanting to be attractive to everybody. Everybody shouldn't want you and you shouldn't want everybody to want you. You should be very specific about who you want so that everybody who you want is coming to you, is attracted to you. If you start, you know, wanting everybody, you end up having to please everybody. Yeah. And that is a disservice to you. And then you lose almost who your authentic self is after, after doing that. Yeah, exactly. So I just had to come to terms after that really crazy client (laughs) and say, (laughs) who did, why did I start this? When I think about why I got excited getting into this business, who was I dreaming of? Who was my ideal client? Who, who was the person that, you know, if I could describe them, What were those characteristics? And I said, you know, that is my market. That is who I'm targeting. And I'm not targeting anybody else. Now, if if other people want to, great. 
But as long as they realize that this is the this is where I am, this is who I am, this is how I'm going to, you know, serve the world in this way. And if you're on the board with that, great. But if you want something else, your money is not going to change that. Yeah. And I think I love what you said about, you know, really being authentic with who you are, because I have found so much in my life that when I started being my authentic self, regardless of what anybody else thought, I was much more successful. I was surrounded with people I enjoyed being surrounded with, and I didn't have to feel like I needed to apologize. I have a very strong personality. Like, and a lot of people are like, I can tell. I'm like, oh, it's even stronger than what comes out there. Like, you do not (laughs) say, what do you think? Unless you really want to hear what I think. And I've learned to go, do you really want to know what I think? Or do you want me to just tell you what I think you want me to say, (laughs) you know? But I, it took a lot. And I think that's the same with, you know, with relationships, whether, you know, you're just starting a relationship or whether it's a business relationship or personal is really being okay with who you are and being unapologetic about who you are. Cause I've like, since I was a teenager, I was like, either like me or you don't like there's no in between with my personality, but I needed to learn over the years to be okay. When someone's like, you're not my cup of tea and go, okay. You know, and not be insulted or not be hurt and just be like, that's okay. Like, it's okay that, you know, and still be nice and still, hi, how are you? But I don't, you know, I don't feel the need anymore to, you know, try to win that person over. And that has a lot to do with your confidence in yourself. And I think that you can, I, I can almost smell when someone doesn't have confidence in themselves because they are so wrapped up in what other people want that they never stop to think about what they wanted. Yeah. They never stop to think about, well, who, who exactly do I want surrounding me or who, do, who, who needs to be in my life? Who deserves my investment? And they're just like, oh, well, I never really thought about that. And just like, okay, well then what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, why, why do you, ju- why don't you care? about who you just want someone and it's not about someone because at the end of the day who you are is going to show and if that person is not matching up with who you are at the end of the day you're it's always going to end up badly it's always going to end up broken because you haven't stopped to think or you haven't stopped to value your own worth over someone else's so I, I try to, if, if I had that type of client, I'd work on that first, making sure that they're like, they're at a point where they're like, I don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. Like you said, yeah, you either like me or you don't, I'm a like me. And that's all that matters. Yeah. And that's how, I mean, and people, they respect that. Like people honestly, truly do respect that. And especially, um, you know, the, whoever you're trying to, um, to date or to marry, everybody wants to be with a confident, happy person. At the end of the day, confident, happy, just a good natured person. You're, you're, you're already half the halfway there. Yeah. But if you don't have those, you're going to spend so much time spinning your wheels, trying to figure out why things aren't connecting because you haven't connected with yourself. Yeah. And I think, and, and that's true. And I think that, that that's what you're saying is in for a relationship, you have to know who you are and -hmm. what exactly is it that you want before you can even try to find a relationship. Yeah. Cause you'll just get anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just like with business, you'll get any, you'll get everybody. Yeah. Well, and it's like, uh, you know, I always say, you know, those, those people that those timeshare things work for. Oh, let me show you are you Let one of those sh- people? <laughs> you know what? I have a beachfront to show to to uh to sell you in Idaho. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. You're right. You're totally right though. So thank you so much for coming on today yeah. and giving us so much piece of advice because I I do think that relationship is the one thing that never gets talked about in business. And it's the one thing that really is lacking because yeah. you do, you get, you get stuck. I know sometimes I sit there and I go, hmm, it's eight o'clock and I've spent, you know, all those hours a day solo. So I really loved what you said about making sure that you're taking that time and that you're actually scheduling it in 
but that you have that conversation with your significant other or with your family members to say, is this agreeable? Yeah. Um, because I yeah. think that, you know, I think it, that is the biggest piece of advice that I am taking from this is that, you know, I do have a tendency of saying, this is what I'm giving you. Not, is this, is this okay? Will this work yeah. for you? I'm just like, this is what I can offer. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like, well, what if I don't want that? Like, <laughs> Does that matter to you? Like, yeah, that's that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Here you go. You got five minutes. You right, got five, five minutes. Five, go. Five, five, five. And, Four fifty-five. And, 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 and the thing is, I've done that. You know, I, trust me when I say, even though I'm a coach, I go through the same things. Right? I'm human, and so even today, it's, fr it's Friday, and my family we have fun Friday, and so I was just telling my husband like, oh well, I had to change my date. Of my, of my talk from Thursday to Friday. And he was just like, you know, today is fun Friday. I was like, I know, I know, I know, but here's what I'm doing. And he's just like, all right. When, you know what I mean? So it, we had a new agreement. I said, it's only going to be the hour. We still have the rest of the night and here's what we can do. And he was just like, all right. So again, make a, you can, and the thing is you can make a new agreement. Agreements can be changed and shifted but as long as you guys are communicating and talking it through and saying okay this was the normal it's not it's not working for me anymore let's change the normal but as long as you guys agree on it it's all good yeah oh i love that well mm -hmm. thank you so so much i just yeah, really you. enjoyed our talk and we'll make sure that we link to all of the places that people can um read about your blog and more about you and then if they're interested too in finding that extra thing in their life to enhance yes. it. <laughs> yes, yes, please do. So get out there and play the field if you're, of course, single. And if you're married or in a relationship, make sure that you take time. Make sure that you're making an effort to close the laptop, to leave work right on time. Maybe don't stay extra late and let that significant other know that they matter to you. It's one of the things that I struggle to always remember to do. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. I wish that everyone finds the love exactly like they're looking for. And remember, when you're going through the dating life or even the married life, have fun with it. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs>